Kicking us off for this video is a few items in the stash shop. I have a little book here on painting with watercolours and this covers some of the basics such as tone and mixing colours. This is a really great starting point. The reference pictures in this book are William Newton himself so he's using his own artwork to teach you the basics of watercolour. So if you're looking to get it going or maybe just need a little help along the way, and goodness knows I did, that's why I got it, you can check that out. I've also got this precious pack of Winsor & Newton Artist Charcoal. This is unused, um, came in a subscription box and truthfully kind of forgot about it because I've already got a set of this charcoal. Um, so that's going to be there for anyone who would like to give that a bash. Finally I have the Karen Pigment Deco brushes. I have a set of the Brush Marker Pros, which I love. These have very similar tips on them. These are really nice pens. They're just not something I use very often on account of not being much of a marker person. So happy to pass these on at a bargain price to someone who wishes them. Lastly, before we get into the meat of the video, I just want to invite you, if you are available, to join us for our first Wednesday work in progress live stream. And that is going to be the last Wednesday of the month. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and um, I have missed a scroller box. My July box has gone missing so I think I'm going to have to get in touch with scroller box and see if they will send me out another one. I might speak nicely to them and tell them I've been a good girl. Uh, this here is the August scroller box so we are going to get stuck in and uh, we're going to take a look at the supplies and maybe do some artwork as well. So scroller box is the UK monthly art subscription box that provides a range of supplies that are curated to go together and we can use them to create an artwork with inspiration that comes in the magazine and also in the form of the scroller challenge which is the art prompt that also comes in the box. Oh I love the inside of the boxes look they've changed the inside of the boxes. Share your unboxings with us uh, hashtag scroller box. This is nice this makes me want to colour this in. <laughs> Okay, um, so here is our magazine and we have some marker paper, uh, A5 marker paper, 10 sheets, 75 GSM acid free, so I'm assuming this will be white and smooth. And the answer is yes, very nice indeed, pretty, pretty standard common or garden. And here is our featured artist, I love it when they give us art in the square format, this makes me happy. So this is Willy Watt. Way! <laughs> it's Willy Watt. Um, Willy uh, <laughs> has the architect's sketchbook on Instagram. He always shares all his drawings, and he draws a lot of places around Scotland. And he he quite often shares his bits and pieces with me because it's places that I uh, well, it's places that I lived. This is lovely to see. I am I'm so pleased that this that this is Mr. Watt. This that's just made my day. Like that has actually made my day. <laughs> Yay! Um he, yeah, he, draw, he draws lots of he draws lots of Scottish like uh, fishing villages and he likes to draw um some agricultural buildings and stuff and he, he drew a lot of the, the, the places around Fife, which is where the original cave was. So I'm um, I'm really happy that he's here. That has absolutely made my morning. Right, let's take a wee look at the supplies. I'm assuming we are going to have some markers. We've got we've got our sticker, which is a little mini version of the of the artwork. We have got a an edding draw liner 0.1. Oh, look at the tip on this. Oh yeah, look at that bad boy. It's tiny. I have still got the edding fine liner pen that came in one of my very first scroller boxes. It might have been my very first scroller box ever. Um it, it's a bit worse for wear now. Um, but I still have it and it's still going strong and it's one of those ones that I just like to reach for, you know. Um, so that's nice. I quite like the edding pens, obviously. <laughs> but we also have these, which is the Faber-Castell uh, Goldfaber Sketch Dual Markers. And this is the architecture colour range. I have never tried these markers, so that's really nice. It's very refreshing to get something in a box that I haven't tried before. This, it does tell you it's alcohol-based ink and it's 100% recycled plastic. Now these markers look like they've got a fine liner end and a brush end. And if that's the case, these are going to be fabulous. It, strangely, I, I was talking about Goldfaber pencils in, in another video just recently. That's really weird that that's popped up all of a sudden. Um, right, let's take a little look. So I'm assuming we're going to be greys. Yeah. Oh, they give you a little swatch chart. How cute is that? Oh my word. 
the Faber Castell always put these in with their supplies and it usually gives you the colour range and then they advertise other things. Oh no, this has got techniques on it. Oh, that's nice too. So, not only have you got your scroller box for inspiration, but you've actually got this information in with your markers. That's really cool. I, I like that a lot. That's a really nice addition. Um, and this is the thing when you buy Faber-Castell products. This is, you know, you get you get your money's worth. Ooh. Right, so looking forward to testing these out. Um, they seem quite... They've got um, colour names and numbers on them. Light Pigeon Blue. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Um, warm Grey. A couple of Warm Greys. Lots of Warm Greys. Green clay. Oh, that sounds fun. That must be this greenish colour here, I'm thinking. Dark sepia, Jem's favourite. So let's take a look at one of these individually. See, we'll swatch them out in a minute, but we just want to see what they look like. I think I'm going to go for the pigeon. Oh, that looks like a lovely tip. I like the look of that a lot. Is it squishy? Oh no, it's quite firm. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. And yes, we've got we've got a much thinner, more like a fine linery type end as well. I'm excited. I would never get excited about markers. That's nice. And we've got a Walker's English Cream Toffee. And well, that's going to be, once again, very tasty, but absolutely terrible for your teeth. Uh, no one seems to care about that, though. So, yeah. I've noticed that the card is missing. There used to be a card that had the um, the product on it and the scroll challenge was on the back. So I'm wondering if it's in the zine now or whether mine's just missing, but we'll soon find out. This feels different. This feels much more rigid. Okay, let's go. So here are our items. Oh, scan the QR code for supply information and prices. The scroller challenge is on the back page. So they've digitised things as well. Right, where's my phone? Oh, I hate it when they do this. It's fine. I don't need to charge my phone because my battery's flat, honestly. Right, let's see what we've got here. Ooh. Okay, they've just ruined the scroller challenge for me as well because I've had to scroll past it to get to the contents of the box. Nice one, scroller box. Thanks for that. What's in the box? The Faber-Castell architecture set. A scroller box exclusive launch for Europe. This set contains consists of six alcohol-based dual-ended markers in all the colours, featuring a soft brush nib at one end. Well, I didn't feel very soft to me, but um, we'll, we'll test them out. Um, great for filling in large areas and varying line widths. And the other end is a fine tip liner in a 0 0.6. Quick drying, water resistant, smudge proof and easy to blend. Recommended retail price is 23 99 Now that sounds quite steep, but you've got to remember that these are alcohol markers, although they're in a much thinner format than what you would normally associate with alcohol markers. Um, that's where the, the cost's going. Obviously, the RRP, we talk about this all the time, is usually slightly inflated. You will be able to get them cheaper than that. Um, but I fully expected a set of these to be quite expensive. The Edding Marker, a high-tech drawing fibre pen with a metal framed round tip. Black pigment based ink is water resistant, light fast. One dry. Recommended retail price £2.45. I don't think I've ever paid £2.45 for a fine liner in my puff. And you've got your wee uh, scroller box marker pad and they're retailing that at two ninety nine, which is, is, you know, that's acceptable. The paper is specially formulated to prevent ink from bleeding or seeping through onto the page underneath. When they say that the paper is bleed proof, they do not mean that nothing will show on this side. You will always get ghosting on this side unless the paper has been specifically formulated not to do that. Um, what they mean is that it will not soak onto this page. So obviously we're going to test that theory out. Um, and that is just the nature of alcohol markers. There are a few papers, again, we've talked about this before. Uh, Render do a paper um, that you won't see on the other side, so you can use both sides. And also um, the Upcrate company, Artspace, they do the sonic wallpaper, and it's pretty good as well. So you have options if you're looking for something like that. Anyway, I digress. That is the, the, the contents. It's fairly short and sweet. So let's see what else is in the magazine. So this is the interview with Willie. I recognise some of these places as well, obviously, just because I'm familiar with the areas that he covers. And here we've got some scroller tips. Uh, I'm actually going to sit down and read that all the way through. Um, scroller tips here. The, this is actually quite nice as well. There's a good amount of information in here. I feel as if they've kind of beefed this section up. You know, they're talking about things like mark making, which is going to be very versatile because of these dual tipped pens. And uh, they talk about pressure as well. So this is highly, highly worth a read through if you are maybe unfamiliar with markers. It's not your wheelhouse or you're just brand new to everything. 
that this is really good information. I like the fact that they've included perspective as well. So behind the artwork, okay, so talking about the, the featured artwork in the magazine and a few tips from Willie himself on what to do with your drawings. Love that as well. The scroller gallery from the 94 scroller box, that was the graphite pencil with the gold pen. Um, I didn't participate in this because I was busy moving stuff. Um, these are lovely. I really, really like them. This one, by far, look, just look, that's lovely. That's my favourite. Really nice use of the gold. I like it a lot. It's so nice to see artworks in graphite because graphite is my favourite thing to work in. And it just, this just goes to show you what can be done with a, a plain old graphite pencil. I know it was a little bit more than that, but you get what I'm saying. You know, you get the gist of it. And here's the scroller top three. Helen Jones. Um, yes. Okay, so the scroller, the scroller team liked the eagle the best. I actually like her little field mouse here. This is my favourite. This is very fitting for me right now. I'm surrounded by crops. Um, these are lovely though. Really, really nice. This is an interesting use of it. I like this a lot. Ah, scroller extra, the graffiti castle. <laughs> So um, this is uh, this is very close. I was like we're keeping this like Scottish theme this time. Uh, this is very very close to where I was brought up. It's at Kelburn Country Estate, which is open to the public. It's located in Fairley, and that's where my my gran that passed away a couple of years ago. So my mum's mum, she actually lived in Fairley, and it's a tiny little village. There's not much going on, but the the Kelburn Centre is amazing. There's loads to do. If you're ever on the west coast of Scotland, I highly recommend going to Kelburn. Um, there's loads to do, especially if you've got kids as well. Um, there, there's a lot of adventuring and exploring to be done as well, not just looking at the castle. Uh, that is really nice to see that in here. That is absolutely lovely. And uh, there's some information about socials down the side here. Uh, they're, they're keeping up this live stream now. So Thursday the 21st of September. So we can talk about all the goings on in the box and the supplies. And I'm assuming we're going to do a bit of arting as well. The Scholar Challenge point of view. Scholars, what's that on the horizon? Whether you live in a rural or urban setting, there is so much to draw and explore. Taking inspiration from our featured artists, we encourage you to get outside and capture the character of your surroundings. Build up tones, marks and textures to create your point of view. That's really nice. I really like that as a prompt. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, let's test out some supplies. All right, let's take a look at these. <laughs> I'm keen to have a little shot with this fine liner. Let's zoom in a little bit. Wow! -ee. It's very fine and it's a liner. I love these teeny tiny fine liners. They're just so satisfying. They really are. Ink flow is good. The nib is nice. The nib does feel quite delicate, but you're always going to get that with a, a fine liner of this size. I'm going to put some hatch lines quite close together because I want to test these alcohol markers over the top of that once it's dry to see how much we're actually going to be able to use you know before it smudges if it smudges at all it may not so we'll leave that to dry and we'll have a wee go with some of these colors so let's do the let's do the grays first we've got three grays warm gray one three and five okay here is the brush end oh okay so this brush is very firm in at the uh, at the base here but the end's quite flexible um, so we can get really skinny lines and we can ooh, use them the way they are intended. That's a really nice shade as well. I like that a lot. So let's see about the other end. Oh, look at that for precision. That's nice. That is a really nice tip. I like that a lot. I didn't think I was going to like that. It's it's actually comes to a point. It's, it is bullet shaped. I'm assuming that you're able to see that against the paper there. Uh, but this is lovely. What a refreshing little item. I like these. And it's alcohol ink as well. I would oh, I would associate twin tip markers like this, unless it's Tombow markers, um, but I would associate these with water-based ink. So this is really nice. That is such a delicate grey as well. That's lovely. Okay, let's try the warm grey three next. Oh, a bit darker in colour. Soaking into the paper quite nicely as well. And here is the other end. Oh, these are nice guys. Oh, no. This is our darkest grey now. You can get quite a nice even colour with these as well. It's not too streaky. One of the benefits of alcohol markers and uh, it does depend on your paper though. Uh, the, the the paper that you use your markers on can have a huge impact on how smooth you can get, um, you know, when you're filling areas in. But this is, this is pointing in the right direction. So let's have a quick look. Obviously this is just one layer of ink and there is nothing underneath there. But you can see it has ghosted through onto the other side. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Fully expected. Right, let's try the other colours now. So this is the sort of greenish grey colour. What did they call it? Green clay. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the colour I want in my living room. Mr Gemini are in the process of picking colours for everywhere in the house. And this is the colour 
I want my living room. I'm going to have to take this to the paint counter. Uh, this is the light pigeon blue. Oh, pretty, pretty. That's a nice colour too. I, oh yeah. See now, going through my mind at this juncture is, oh, these are really pretty. I want to keep these. And the reality is I'm never going to use them. I just like them because they're pretty. Okay, and this is the dark sepia. Oh, look at that. We've got contrast, ladies and gentlemen. Fabulous. That's marvellous. We've established that the pens are pretty. We like them. I like both the ends. It's a good selection. The, the choice of the brush tip and the slightly chunkier fine liner stroke almost into a felt tip with the bullet nib. Excellent choices. Love it very much. Now what I want to do is I want to batter the paper. So I'm going to use the darkest pen for that because it's the easiest one to do with. Um, you'll be able to see fairly quickly. So let's do this in layers. And this is drying super quick. You know, I can actually see it drying on the paper. So this isn't going to take long. This has had a while to dry now as well. So I'm going to use a much, much lighter colour. I'm going to use the lightest grey. And I want to see how good this really is. Now I have got, I had a little bit of pressure on that there and that has not moved, but if I continue to bully it, is it going to start to... No, it's not. Well, there you have it. Okay, I am a, I am a great one for putting the fine liner down first and then, you, you know, filling in my, like, in between my line work a bit like I would if I was colouring. That is my preferred sequence of events, so that's pleased me very much. Let's go again. Still nothing. Still nothing. We're doing well here. That's three. <laughs> okay, this uh, this is me up to six six layers now, and that's almost black. And um, you can see that's the original color with one layer next to it. That's something they talk about in the scholar zine as well as layering the color up to make it richer. And one color I think it's going to work particularly well with is this green color. I'll just put another layer in that to show you. But yeah, we, we've got we're we're pretty close to black here. That is six layers of alcohol marker. And although it's shown substantially through here, there is nothing, there is not a jot on this other piece of paper. So this paper is exactly what we need. It's really good quality. Thank you very much, Scroller Box. That's marvellous. I'm just going to put another layer in there just, just, just to make sure, you know. Yeah, we're good. Okay, excellent. Now, um, point of view, this is very, uh, very interesting and helpful for me right now because I actually took a photograph when I was out on my morning doggy walk. These colours may not lend themselves terribly to it, but I think we can have a good go at it. So I'm actually quite excited that I've got something to draw. As with as with all the scroller boxes, this is obviously an off-the-cuff go at the, the scroller challenge. I never expect anything out of them, but I would like to make a little start. I'm walking the dogs anyway, um, so I thought I would take you all to the spot um, where I've taken the photographs that I'm going to use for this scroller challenge. I'll probably take some more photographs because the ones that I have are quite an overcast day for as um, the sun is shining today. A jock and pip here too and uh, we'll go down to the spot. Okay so here we are we're in a really quiet wooded area but if we just head over here you can see in the distance there there's a tiny ladder over there that's where we're going and uh, we come here <laughs> Pip and Jock know where we're going. <laughs> Funny. And uh, this just looks like a dry old field. <laughs> but if I kind of pan round a bit, we've got some hills off in the distance. But there's a little gazebo over there. And I think that this, as a focal point, makes a really, really nice picture. So I would use this as a base and add things in, but that's what we're looking at. And we also have the same spot here from a slightly different angle. You can see that the gazebo's away down at the bottom. And you could do something maybe with a bit more scenery or maybe not. Dog smells a deer. Boing, 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 boing. <sighs> so all those lovely photos I've taken, I have just put them onto a sheet of paper. Someone asked me what I used to do this. There's loads of programs that you can use. Uh, I, I'm a bit old school. I actually use Microsoft Publisher to do this. Uh, I, I was kind of like brought up on Publisher and it's kind of stuck with me. Uh, you can do this in Photoshop and a myriad of other programs. Uh, just So just... Uh, so that's not too bad. So looking at these pictures here, the actual gazebo isn't that prominent. 
I really wasn't taking these photos for the gazebo. I was taking them to decide which viewpoint and which angle this artwork should be from. I really like this one with framed, you know, with the trees. That's very kind of up my alley. Um, I think I will probably splice a few of these together and that's what using reference photos really is. Um, but I have to decide which angle I think is best. And honestly, I think a combination of this one with the, the I nearly said a pagoda there. Oh my God. <laughs> ah, a combination of this one with the gazebo at one end with maybe a silhouette type frame effort here. Um, I was thinking we could lay up the greys and make them a bit darker. I think that might be quite a nice um, combination. I'm going to put Willie's uh, artwork up here just for a wee bit of insp inspiration right in front of me. Why not? Right, so I need a, a pencil, which, uh, they, oh, I've got an artful, oh, 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 I'm cheating on a scroller box here with an artful pencil. Um, let, let, let's be, let's be realistic, this is a pencil. The sticker is available in the stash shop. We talked about, the, there was a little chat about perspective in the, um, in the scroller zine, so I think I'm going to go like one point perspective. I'm not going to be too fussy about it and my vanishing point is going to be way off the paper. It's going to be like over here somewhere, I would think. I think I want to bring the gazebo further down in the image. Like I think I want the gazebo about here. So by having a tree sort of leaning that way, I'm kind of like pointing people towards the gazebo, which is obviously going to be up in this corner. Okay, uh, yeah, quite happy with that. Uh, right, okay, so we need to put our, some trees in here. So I'm just going to give this suggestion of a tree line here. And there's one that's kind of poking up. Okay, so there's my there's my tree line. What that lets me do is it lets me put in the sky. So for the sky, obviously, I'm going to use that sort of pigeon blue. And we can really use this to our advantage here. This <laughs> I'm a wee bit excited about this. I am going to mark in with the dark sepia. Uh, just so that the trunk is there and I can see where I'm, I'm going with it. And I'm going to do that with the, the kind of felt tip end. And then the same on this side. So let's try and replicate this like hazy sky. I decided not to use the original pictures that I, that I already had. Um, just because when I, especially when I printed these off just then, like the, the sky is so blue, like it makes for a much nicer reference image. So that's why I didn't bother um, using the other ones. I'll keep, I might keep them for another purpose though, like I haven't deleted them. So I, now what I'm trying to do is decide whether I want to make this a solid background. I don't think I do. Um, I think it's more interesting if it's not. Some might even say that's just my point of view. Ah, oh, get it, get it. Oh. But also we can add in a little bit of the um the lightest grey. So I'm not going layers and layers here because I don't need to and I don't want to, but I'm gonna make that sky just a wee bit more interesting. Why not? Okay, so uh, similar to what, what Willie's done here, uh, what I need to do is actually draw in my gazebo because I'm going to have to preserve that area because it's white. Um, so I have to be very specific with that. So that's the next thing that I'm doing. So a little bit of concentration here. And what I'm really grateful for is the fact that we're going to have this... Um, the fact that we've got the fine liner tips, it makes it much, much easier for me to fill this, the rest of this in. And I'm just going to start with a layer of this in on this side. But while I'm doing this, um, I don't want nice smooth strokes because I want there to be like texture in here. So maybe not so bothered about it in at the bottom there. So then if I grab the darkest grey, you can see by going straight over the top here, we've still actually got green. We can add in some bits and bobs here. You know, like, like we did here with the with this sepia colour, you know, we're getting darker and darker so we can get different shades. And that's going to help us build interest um, from this point of view. I'm particularly keen to get going around the gazebo. So as I said, I'm going to use the, um, the more fine linery end for that. All the concentration. <laughs> there is a slight bleed 
um, with the uh, the marker as well. So I'm trying to take that into consideration um, when <laughs> when I'm doing these sections. It's not the easiest. I, well, I mean, I'm managing, but it's like whew, deep breaths. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, I think we did it. <laughs> So I'm deliberately using these sort of spasmodic movements um, and it's just the same as over here. It's just to create a little bit of texture. I don't want, because this is a really vast expanse um, and we we want to break it up like we do, but we don't want it to be too fussy because we want to draw the eye towards the gazebo because that is our, you know, the, that's the point of interest. I'm going to build out my silhouette line here as well, which you see I'm being really precious about. All right, I might put a wee um, might put a wee gate in here because why not? Try and give it some texture, but we want to put in that sort of indication that there's some sort of separation there. So this is where we can just get creative with our greys a little bit. I'm going to put the green out the way for a wee while, and I'm going to follow some of the lines that I've put down here. See, there's a line there, Lou. Let's let's make that into something. Why not? I do not have the hand for this. Um, I have the unsteadiest hand in the world, hand injury related. So this will be a freaking miracle. <sighs> oh dear. <laughs> okay, this front part, you're going to think I'm absolutely crazy. That's okay. Look how quickly I'm able to cover this area with this set. This brush tip is great. Uh, I'm going to take the green clay and go over the top of this now. And you can see it's going to give me a much richer, darker green than the background. Okay, so now on to the foreground, which is uh, probably a bit more fun, actually, weirdly. So creating a bit of texture here. So back to the darkest green, out, which is what we've outlined with. And I am going to work that in here. Now, I'm going a bit more carefully with this because I would like to kind of create almost like a wood grain texture. And the way I'm going to do that is just by varying the pressure because obviously we've got brush tips, so that's impressive. And we just layer up these lines, make them a wee bit wobbly. And I'm just going to use my warm grey to fill in any white parts because I don't want any white at all on this because obviously this is framing. I think they could have done with um, making the caps on the, the pens a bit more accurate. Um, this just looks like one of the greys to me. It's very difficult to discern that that, that is a green shade. Um, you know, it's got a very slight green tint to it, but in the grand scheme of things, it's considerably considerably greener -er than the, the greys. So now uh, grabbing the dark sepia again, this is where I want to start adding in some details. I just showed you how observant I am because I, I walk past this area or have been walking past this area maybe twice a week since I arrived here. Don't pay attention to, <laughs> to what breed of trees are kicking about. Things are, things are a bit wild around these here parts. A lot of things just left to, to um, you know, to be wild and do their own thing and I kind of like that. So I'm using the darkest warm grey again. Like this is too light for me. I don't want to go all in with the sepia because we're going to lose quite a lot of that um, texture, and I don't want that. But it's just it's a wee bit too light for my liking. There's going to be a plant that's a bit further out into the light, so like towards the field. So I'm going to use the fine liner on the warm grey for that to indicate that it might be a bit more out in the sunlight. All right, guys, I think I'm going to call it done at that. I'm not really sure where I'm signing my name. Do you think I can sneak it in down this bottom corner and it would be seen? It's there. It is there, but it's not. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, there we go. That is it for today. Um, not quite up to the standard of our featured artist. Um, but weirdly pleased with this for some bizarre reason. Um, I think this is a lovely box. In terms of markers, I really like Like, I really, really like these. I always expect good quality from Faber-Castell, regardless of whether they're touting it as um, professional range or not so professional range. Um, Gold Faber's kind of like the student grade Faber-Castell stuff and I think it's fabulous. This is actually a really nice box. I'm, I'm kind of pleased with this box. It's nice to have a high quality effort. 
a welcome change. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the box or your what kind of artwork you have done for this challenge or what you're thinking of doing. And that is it for today, guys. Just a reminder that we have a live stream on the 30th of August. It is Wednesday afternoon UK time. So if you're available to come and hang out with us, um, we're, we're going to have a little uh, topic of conversation as well. Hope to see some of you there. That's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for coming and hanging out.